Hey guys and welcome back to what is another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where I explore noteworthy, hidden, unseen and secret content in video games. This is part 2 of my Mario Kart 64 Lost Bits series, so if you're watching this first and haven't yet seen part 1, I highly recommend you check it out first by clicking the card right here, as I cover a few important details and the first half of the game's courses in that video. Similarly to part 1, I will be using the free camera system to see what interesting things I can find or take a closer look at throughout the game. And really quickly as always before we begin, if you guys do enjoy this video and would like to support the channel and see more Lost Bits in the future, please be sure to slap a big fat like down below as well as a comment about what future games you would like to see covered in a Lost Bits episode. It's certainly much appreciated. And with all of that out of the way, let's begin exploring. First up on the chopping block, we have one of my favorite Mario Kart 64 courses, Wario Stadium, which I think to this day still hasn't seen a remaster in a newer game. Looking around, we can take a closer look at the fans, which just so happen to be the exact same textures as the fans we saw in the previous episode in Mario Raceway. Yeah, who'd have thought, right? It also appears that if a fan wants to exit the stadium, they have to do so by jumping into a dark, endless void. And the last notable part about this map is another Jumbotron, which displays whatever the camera is displaying, just like in Luigi's Raceway. It's really trippy and it's quite fun to just mess around with. And next we have Sherbetland, or Sherbert, or Sorbetland, or however you want to pronounce it. I think I've honestly heard people say it every single way, so however you pronounce it, it's probably right. Right after we start the map, we can have a closer look at the large penguin just waddling away on his own on his little private island. Next, what I thought was pretty cool is that the game actually tricks us into seeing a reflection from the ice. If we actually take the camera underneath the ice, we can see that there are in fact two models being used to create the reflective illusion. This also applies to your character who has a ghostly double underneath. I'm sure there's a creepypasta about Mario Kart 64 ghosts somewhere. Royal Raceway is Peach's home course, and similarly to Luigi in Mario's Raceway, you start near a crowd of spectators, but instead of the Mario Bros hats, they now sit under Peach's crown. Kinda of puzzles me why it says Yoshi on the banner here instead of Peach or something though. Now if you've raced on Royal Raceway in Mario Kart 64 before, then you already know the big landmark on this map. Towards the end of the course, you can actually drive up to Peach's castle, which almost looks identical to how it looks in Super Mario 64, with the exception of a few details like the waterfall on the side and the cannon area. When I first found this area when I was younger, I was absolutely blown away at how cool this was. But unfortunately, if we try and take a look around inside the castle, we can see that it's empty. That would be really awesome if the inside was textured like it was in Super Mario 64 as well, but I understand that's kind of unnecessary if no one can actually see inside. Surprisingly enough though, the top of the castle is actually rendered, but unfortunately Yoshi isn't lounging up there this time. It also looks like the developers got kinda lazy as they didn't attach the Princess Peach glass stained window to the actual castle. Tisk tisk. Moving along, we have another really cool level, Bowser's Castle. Now if you've seen my video on Secret Mario 64 characters, then you might remember Marty the Thwomp over here, and due to culling, it appears that Marty might actually escape from his cage. Or not, but we can actually go inside the cage now and at least keep him some company for a bit. Now onto the special cup, we start with DK's Jungle Parkway. One of the first things you see when you start this course is the large Mario steamship on the river, which looks like it just drives off of a waterfall. Rip. Now if you're anything like me, you've probably tried at some point to land on the ship, but have been disappointed to see that you just fall right through and get brought back to land. Well if you did, you didn't really miss much because just like the train in Calamari Desert, there's not much to see inside the ship either. Later in the course, you might also remember that if you stray from the main path, you begin to get barraged by some spiky looking fruits or something. I always wondered who was throwing these. I always assumed it was Diddy or Donkey Kong or someone, but if we take a look behind the tree line, we can see that they are in fact just appearing in midair and are instantly launched at the player. Yoshi's Valley can be quite confusing for first time players, and if we zoom up for a bit, we can have a good look at the mess of paths that make up this level. The most notable thing about this map, as many of you may know, is the giant Yoshi egg towards the end of the course. From a distance, if we zoom in, we can see that this egg isn't actually yet rendered as a 3D object, but just a flat 2D image, most likely to save on memory. It isn't until we get much closer that the egg transitions into a giant cart crushing 3D object that we all remember. Another memorable map in this game is the Dark Banshee Boardwalk. As the map is mostly in open air, there are only a few things to note in this course. The first is the giant cheep cheep which jumps out of the water. 
I was lucky enough to place the camera right where it jumps towards, and it also looks like it travels quite a bit down before it finally disappears. We can also take a closer look at the boos which spawn around you at various points in the course, which look quite different than the one seen in Super Mario 64. And lastly, we can take a quick look from a different perspective through the abandoned, decrepit house in the map which always gave me the creeps when I was younger. And the last, and certainly one of my all-time favorite Mario Kart stages, is Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road. This map actually has a surprisingly long draw distance, and we can even see some lights and roads from really far away. Save for getting a closer look at the star here, as well as all the character lights, there isn't any hidden stuff here, so I thought we would just have a closer look at some of the map's highlights. And with all the racetracks explored, it's time we move on to the battle stages. Again, as far as I know, these have to be played in multiplayer only, so please excuse the double camera. First up, we have the third map, and probably my second favorite battle map, Double Deck. The different levels to this map certainly make it an awesome level for a multiplayer game. Similar to Block Fort, this map is so small so there isn't much hidden here to see, but I thought it was pretty cool to fly around the map and look at it from underneath, giving us a new perspective. And last but certainly not least in today's video is the battle map Skyscraper. I was surprised to see how tall the skyscraper was actually rendered, even though it didn't need to be as you never really see this far down. This stage also uses an encircling skybox instead of a generic gradient one like we saw in the previous levels, so we can finally take a much closer look at it. As you can see it doesn't really look too great from this distance, but I guess no one was really meant to see it this close. And that concludes this Lost Bit series on Mario Kart 64, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I had a ton of fun exploring these courses, and I hope it was interesting to you guys as well. And again, if you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like down below, and let me know what your favorite Mario Kart 64 course was to see. And if you'd like to stay even more up to date with me and my channel, please consider subscribing, as well as throwing me a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Links to all those will be in the description below, and I hope to see you all there. And as always, my dudes, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.